Hello everyone, my name is Max Edward, and today I'll be showing to you my graphics using object-oriented programming, sliding boxes program, uh, which I made for the Rust programming class at the University of Advancing Technologies. So before we get into running the program, we'll go over the code first, and as always, the code uh, program in, the, in its entirety will be in the description, uh, link in the description um, to my GitHub repository. So let's go ahead and cover the code first. Um, so first I'm gonna go ahead and touch on the main .rs file, uh, I guess the main program, our code for the program. And then uh, I'll go ahead and touch on the, the cargo toml file as there is a dependency that you need to add. And um, I don't remember if I've done this on the other ones. However, I decided better late than never to start doing this just in case um, you're wanting to recreate this for some reason and you're typing it all by scratch and uh, you're getting an error that you don't understand and it might be linked to dependencies. So let's go ahead and cover the dependency we're using first. So um, instead of mini FB, which I've been using for all my graphics, well, I guess I've only made one or two graphics programs so far, um, but I've been using mini FB instead of as the, as the graphics library. Uh, however, for this assignment, I decided to try a little bit something new, um, which would be the SDL2 graphics library. And this is what um, kind of the class is built on. There's there's many different graphic, graphics libraries, um, and each have their own, you know, I guess specialty for your use case. Um, but I decided to try this one, see if it would make my program easier or harder. And I guess to, in the end of it, um, it... <laughs> At least for this program, it didn't really change it. I have another program um, which uh, I'll show at the end of this, um, which I use Mini FB for that. And uh, I think the one thing was that for using uh, structures or just object-oriented programming, SDL2 was easier than Mini FB, um, just because uh, how things, I guess, are displayed on the the window or the canvas um, is different between those two. Anyways, let's go ahead and start talking about it. So the first piece I bring in is this event module here. And what this line here does is it imports everything. Uh, well, it imports all your input. So such as key presses, mouse presses, uh, and we're just doing, we're just importing all of it. So technically I could have had mouse input as well, but in this case, um, it, we're just using it for kind of escaping the program. So the next uh, line of code is for the keyboard module and specifically the key code, uh, I guess, what would it be called object within the module. Um, and this is what allows for key presses to be registered. So if I press, uh, let's say the letter F on my keyboard, um, it's going to go ahead and detect, hey, the user pressed the letter F. Uh, and I have an example here such as the escape key as that's what uh, we use in the program. The next one is the pixels module, and this allows us to be able to represent RGB color data. And um, that's specifically because we are importing the color object of the pixels module. So um, that allows us to use the hexadecimal colors, for example, which is what I use in the program. From there, we import the rect rect module, and that allows for the creation of rectangles and uh, their attributes, so such as size, position, um, anything that we want to do to a rectangle. From there, we have the time module, and specifically, we're uh, importing the duration and instant objects. So this allows for time measuring, um, such as time elapsed, maybe a start time. And this I use specifically for kind of staggering the boxes, uh, which you'll see later. From there, now we have uh, all our constants down here. And these are our constant variables uh, that the entirety of the program can use. So I decided to use ones that you know, I didn't need specific variables for like something like direction, right? Um, I just need to really define that once. But these are variables that, hey, if I wanted to change something really quick, it's right at the top. It's it's big and bold and it changes everything else. So it's kind of like a global variable, um, but they're not mutable, of course. So we're not able to change it, I guess, in the program. They're just they're constant values. Anyways, 
Uh, the first two we have the window height and width and I set it to 640 by 480p and it's in pixels so p. Uh, next we have box velocity so this is at I guess the speed or the velocity that the box moves uh, and in this case up and down and that's measured in a pixels per frame. So if we're running the program let's say at um, 10 frames a second uh, it's going to move 5 pixels per frame so per uh, second that should be about 50 if I'm <laughs> if my math's not wrong there. After that we have our box delay and this is a delay in milliseconds which um, is I in this case I'm setting it so this is the delay before a preceding box moves and that's what allows for the staggered effect that I'm creating here. So they're not all moving together. If I set box delay to zero, they would all instantly move together. Um, and if I made it maybe longer or shorter, I could I can kind of move that uh, that delay around a little bit. Um, the staggered effect would be a lot different. And finally, in our constants, we have the instance uh, delay, which this um, it's kind of hard to explain. However, this is um, let's say if I have uh, 10 boxes, right? Uh, at one, it's not going to skip it. It's just going to go to the, to the next box over. Um, however, if I set this to do to two, and I'll show once we run the program, um, if I set it to two, then it's going to skip a box. And this is kind of, it's not necessarily for the delay, but it's for uh, the direction. So if you want the boxes to kind of move together like a staggered effect or a wave or you can have it move um, kind of against each other and I'll show that later when we run the program. So next we have the uh, first I guess object oriented programming uh, object or in this case a construct and it's the box so um, and how this works is that we don't define all the values in the struct. Instead, it's kind of like a framework. And then later on, we go ahead and define those values. And that just allows, so if you think of it kind of like a blueprint or instructions, right? You're, you're just setting all of the initial kind of setup values, but you're not giving them anything. So it's a, it's a blank slate. And then we can take that struct uh, along with our implementation and then uh, stuff we define later in the code, and we can go ahead and actually generate a box. But this allows us, so we can define one struct of a box, and we can have multiple different boxes from that one struct, so it's actually pretty nice. So um, it kind of reads it out here, but we have a position for the window in X, Y, so the starting position for the box, the box width and height, the color, the direction, either positive or negative, and then we have our delay, which is used that box delay constant up there. And that's just um, the delay between each box moving. Um, next, we have our implementation of that. And this is for all of the box related functions. So anything we're going to do to the box, box, like anything we're going to do to the box. <laughs> so uh, the first one we have is creating the new box object. And this, we're redefining the variables of the box. But then we're also returning a new instance of the box with said variables. Um, and this just allows us to verify we want to use all these variables when we're creating a new box. And uh, returning a new instance of it allows us to say, hey, here's one empty box. You can do stuff with variables. Here's another empty box, another empty box. Um, and it's creating that new box object. If we go down a little more, then we have the draw. Uh, function and what this does is it draws that filled rectangle with some specified things so our specified position our width height and color which all those are defined in the main um, later in the program and so that's basically what this is doing here it's uh, rendering that um, canvas well it's running the basically it's drawing the box out here then we're letting it right here so it's giving it a, a the x y value and then the box height and width sets our color and then we go ahead and fill it if we didn't have this then it wouldn't be a full box it might just be like an outline of a box from there then we have the update function and what this allows us to do is to update that box direction and position after a certain amount of time so um in this case uh 
we're basically modifying direction. Uh, position is kind of a given and that's based on right here. So it's going to change in the Y position and it's going to add that position um, uh, for the direction. So if it's a positive or negative value times our velocity. So at one set at one frame into the program, it's going to say, okay, well, if my box velocity, let's say it's 10, then it's going to multiply that and our box direction is one, then it's going to move the box in the Y position uh, 10. So that should be a positive value. So up, it's going to move it 10 pixels up in that one frame in the next frame, then it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to take it's already the previous value and do that again. So then it's going to move it up to uh, Y position 20 and then it's going to keep going up and up and up until and that's kind of specified down here. We get to the window height. So once it basically hits the window border, then it's going to go ahead and switch direction and then do the same thing. So it's just going to go back down. And then once it hits the window border, then it's going to do the opposite thing. And it does that for all the boxes. Now we get into the main function. So uh, this kind of stuff up here, it, this is obviously defining our main function. And then um, what this allows us to do is it's going to return OK at the very, very end of the program. So it's going to have a result. It's either going to be OK or it's going to be an error message and it'll be in the form of a string. That just makes it easier for uh, diagnosing. Next, we have the, I guess we, 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 well, I don't guess. We're initializing that SDL2 library for usage. And this little question mark at the end, um, it allows for us not to have to kind of do all that error stuff. Uh, it simplifies the error message or error propagation. I have it here. Um, it simplifies a lot better. So if there is an error, it's going to go ahead and output that rather than a specific message. From there, we go ahead and get the video subsystem. And this allows, I guess, for returning the object. Um, so without this, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the functions we have up here. It just kind of basic requirements for the SDL2 uh, library. From there, we actually, this is uh, a lot more <laughs> of what I understand, is uh, we're setting up that window. So right here, we give the window a name. So that's the, gonna be the name of the window. So like something like, I guess, uh, the terminal over here, it's C Windows System 32. Um, it's not gonna say that, it's gonna say Max Edward bar and then sliding boxes. And then we go ahead and give it the window height constant window well window width and window height constants and that will go ahead and uh, put that um, window at those at those specified pixels values then uh, the position of the window centered we'll go ahead and build the window and this is if there's an error it's going to go ahead and print that error to string from there then we go ahead and generate a mutable canvas object and this allows for the canvas to be changed so later in the code, when we change the background and we're not necessarily changing the background, but we're clearing the background, it allows that to happen. From there, um, we actually are setting up the parameters for the canvas. So the first one here is setting that background color. So this case, it's uh, I have it set to like an orange color, a dark orange. So that's that background color and it's in RGB values uh, here we have our canvas clear. So if there's anything that was on the canvas previously when it starts up, um, it's gonna go ahead and clear that out. So there should be nothing on it. And then we go ahead and update the canvas to show the recent activity. So right here, obviously nothing has happened yet. So it should be totally blank and updated. Uh, next, we have uh, this event pump mutable uh, variable here. And this is responsible for collecting and dispatching events which events being like events way down here, like this one of the running loop, stuff like that. From there, we go ahead and create a vector. And this is for all the different boxes we're going to generate. And so we just set up a vector. We don't know how many it's going to be in it, but we want to set that vector up. So we have, we're able to have multiple objects. And the line on it right after that is setting up how many times we want to loop. So we just have a for loop here that's going to loop 10 times. And that's how many boxes are going to be, uh, I guess, displayed in the window. From there, we go ahead and set that box position. 
and not only this is is this for the initial position so the first box but it's also for preceding boxes so if there's box one it's going to go ahead and set it let's say i think this is 100 pixels from the uh and it's x so it's 100 pixels from the um right let's see it's from the left of the screen and then if i set another box it's going to take that initial value and then add another 100 so the boxes should roughly be 100 pixels spaced apart uh i'm unsure exactly if it's from the center point of the box or from the edge point of the box or if it's from the original starting position of the box that's what i think it is so it's going to be the bottom left corner of the box but um anyways it it sets them apart so they're not all together and then the y value here sets that initial y value position which it doesn't really matter what it is in the next frame because that's the value we're changing we're changing the y value then we go ahead and set the width of the box in pixels so it's going to be 30 by 30 and height of box in pixels and then we set that box color so this right here is a nice dark green color and so that adds some contrast so it's easy to see from there we set the initial direction of the box so this is stating and this is kind of where that instance delay right here so uh with a one uh, it's just going to go from box to box it's not going to skip a box if we had that as a two or a four it's going to go ahead and skip the, that number of boxes and then act on the direction of a box later down the line and this is setting it to um uh, negative one so it's going to go down first and then and then it'll go to positive so if we have it at one which it is right now the first box well these should all go down, I know for sure, um, but if it's set to two, it will skip it. And um, so it's only acting on, so let's see if I can make this simplified. The first val the first box will go down, second box will all go down. Um, but if I set it to two, then the first box will go down and then it'll skip one box and then it'll go to the third box, that'll go down and then it'll go through all the boxes, but everything left will go positive. So that's what this is kind of stating. And then we just have a delay. And this is that delay for, uh, I guess, the preceding box before moving. So it's gonna delay for the amount of milliseconds that we specify, I think it's later in the code. Um, let me see, unless we defined it already. I forget exactly where it's defined. Um, however, oh, right here. Oh, way up there it's constant so it's gonna wait 100 milliseconds before going ahead and moving the next box so there's a nice bit of delay between them and it'll stagger it and then finally within here we have creating the box object with the properties so we go ahead and push out that finalized box with all the uh i guess variables or properties that we just defined next we have the start time for the program and this is able this helps it keep uh track of the uh when the when the program started as well as that like delay function so it knows hey 100 milliseconds after the program started i need to move the next box and then 100 milliseconds after that uh, i need to move the next box and so forth so we go ahead and initialize that start time as the current time. So it takes system time, for example, and goes ahead and sets that as our zero point or our start time. Next, we go ahead and create a loop with a running label. And this is just, you could give this label whatever, but this is so we can break out of it later. later. Um, and then next, we go ahead and have this match event, and that just matches a given pattern or key press to event. And what this is basically doing is it's, this, this whole thing right here is it's just going to go and run the program until uh, the key press escape key is pressed. So it's going to quit the, uh, well, let's see, if the escape key is pressed, then it's going to break out of that loop and then end the program. Finally, we get to after it's one, sorry, run one full iteration. So once all the boxes have moved, let's say one frame, it's going to go ahead and clear the canvas. Uh, and erase the previous moves and objects so that all the boxes like they don't uh, kind of draw over one another and then you just have a solid line after I don't know 10 seconds um, so what this does is it sets the entire canvas back to the original orange color and then it goes ahead and clears it 
And then after that, we go ahead and we want to iterate all those boxes. So first we calculate the elapsed time since program start. Then we iterate over each box and it's mutable. So it allows for modification. So we basically say that first box was at zero, zero. I want to move it to 10, zero or whatever. I guess in this case, it would be um, zero, 10. Anyways, uh, then we go ahead and draw that new box with changes in direction and velocity. So if it hit the window border, it's going to change that direction. And velocity should be constant here though. And then this present is just updating that canvas. So it's going to go ahead and update it. Then it's going to run back through that program. And then finally, we have some controls for frame rate and runtime speed of the program. And this is kind of a safeguard. It just adds for some slight delay in the processes. So it doesn't run too fast. We may get errors, things break, boxes could fall out of line. It just allows for the program to kind of think before going ahead and restarting the whole program. And then finally, we have our return OK or end of program. So like I said, this will all be in the GitHub repository in the link in the description. But I guess if you wanted to type it out, here's that. And then finally, I'll go ahead and show the TOML file. So this is a separate file you have to modify in order to use the SDL2, as well as Minifib, RAND, all those types of dependencies. You can't just state it. You also have to kind of import it into the entire uh, directory of your program. So under the cargo.toml file, just in dependencies, uh, you can put the latest version of SDL2. I don't know if this is exactly the latest, but this is the latest that I've been using and it's been fine. And uh, you just put it right there, SDL2 equals then version. And then it'll go ahead and be able to grab that version. And when you first run it or compile it um, or build it, uh, it will go ahead and fetch that dependency and download it but I've already run it multiple times, so that's when that's already downloaded. So we can now run the program. So over here in my terminal window, I'm just gonna type in cargo run. I could go ahead and kind of compile it and have an exe, but um, I found that just for this presentation, uh, I can run into certain errors if I go ahead and um, compile it. So for uh, just running the program. It's not a full flesh program. It's just for an example. So this is fine. So if I type cargo run, we'll go ahead and build it. And there it is. So I want to quickly touch on the warnings we got. This is just because my uh, crate or the program itself isn't in snake case. So that's the only warning there. But right here, you can see that window. So it's Max Edwards sliding boxes. And then you can see all my boxes. So you can see it's it's basically like a square wave function. It's just going like one after another. So it just kind of boop, 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 right? However, if we go ahead and uh, press the escape key, that'll exit it. And I want to show what happens if we change this box instance delay. So if we go ahead and change it from one to two, just like that, save it. And I'll go ahead and run it again. You can see now they kind of, they skip one. So there's still a staggered square wave, but they're inverse. Uh, every other box is inverse. So they kind of go against each other. Um, you can change this to a five even, uh, and it will go ahead and only change the first and fifth one because it skips five boxes, then it'll act on that fifth one. If I had more boxes here, it would be a little different. Um, however, one and two are the best uh, representations of this program. So you have this normal square wave, or you have that kind of two square waves that uh, are inverse, so they go against each other. So yeah, looks just like that. Hello, so for everyone that stuck to the end of the video, I just wanted to show another different program I used, and this was using MiniFB as the uh, graphics library. So if we go ahead and clear this and cargo run, it is a different type of a program and in this case we have this nice gradient background and then we have some spinning boxes and the box color is randomly generated so you can see you have like one pink one these two green ones if i go ahead and close that restart the program now we have some different things so now we have like four green ones these two kind of different uh, pink ones what i've learned is that if you want to use object-oriented programming it's best to have that 
initially in your head when you start the program because I ran into an issue converting all this and that's why I ended up not using this and I kind of rebuilt it from the ground up. Um, so just putting that out there and um, hey, if you want this program, I will go ahead and put this in my GitHub repository and that link will also be in the description. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.